Dear students, in this screencast video lecture, we are going to see about the first important macromolecule that is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic compounds that are in turn composed of elements such as carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Typically with a general formula of CnH2On, this is a common formula by which we use to write the carbohydrate. Chemically, they can be defined as following. They are optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes and ketones that could be resulted on hydrolysis of a carbohydrate. Among the various biomolecules or macromolecules, carbohydrate functions as an important one mainly in the essentiality to the life forms. It is primarily serving as an energy source in all the living organisms. Next we look at into the classification of carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are classified based on the number of sugar units that is technically referred as a saccharides on basis of their hydrolysis also they can be classified. By using these two properties they can be further divided into monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Now we look at the points related to monosaccharides. The name implies that they are all simple sugars. So these monosaccharides are the simplest form of carbohydrate. Mainly they consist of only a single sugar unit. Classical examples are glucose, fructose and galactose. Next we look at into the classification of monosaccharides based on the number of carbon atoms that have been present there. On this basis, they are divided into trioses that contain three carbons. Example for them are glyceraldehyde and dihydroxyacetone that is an aldehyde sugar as well as a acetone form of a sugar that is a ketone form of a sugar. The next one is a tetroses that is containing four carbons. Examples are erythrose and thriose. Pentoses are those monosaccharides that found to have five carbon. Examples of ribose and deoxyribose which are commonly present there in the nucleic acid. The other examples include xylose and arabinose that are commonly present there in the plant cell wall. The next one is a hexose which contains 6 carbons. Here very common sugars such as a glucose, the fruit sugar fructose, galactose and mannose are all will be come across. And the last one is a monosaccharide that is made up of a 7 carbon atoms. Example for this is a pseudoheptulose. Next one is a classification of the monosaccharides based on the functional group they possess. Monosaccharides that found to contain an aldehyde group that is represented by a CHO group at the end of the carbon chain are commonly referred as the aldose sugar. An example for that is a glucose as well as galactose. Whereas a monosaccharide which contains a ketone group that is C double bond O in the end of the carbon chain are referred by a term called ketosis. Here the examples are fructose that is a fruit sugar as well as the dihydroxyacetone that is a simplest form of a sugar. What are the function of this particular kind of a monosaccharides are mainly acting as a building blocks for more complex carbohydrate and they also serve as a quick energy source. The next group is the disaccharides. These are all the one that compose of two molecules of monosaccharides that are in turn linked by a special type of bond called as a glycosidic bond. Examples include sucrose which are in turn made up of one molecule of glucose and a molecule of fructose, lactose which is a milk sugar commonly made up of a glucose and a galactose unit and the next one is a maltose which are made up of two units of glucose. The main functions of these disaccharides is they will be commonly break down during the hydrolysis and they form into monosaccharides. These monosaccharides that is say for example when sucrose is hydrolyzed they form into a unit of glucose and fructose. Glucose and fructose can in turn serve as a energy source for the organisms. The next group is the oligosaccharide that consists of 3 to 10 monosaccharide units that are bonded together. Here the classical examples are a trisaccharides and tetrasaccharides. Trisaccharide the name implies that they consist of three monosaccharide units that forms into the sugar. Example is a raffinose. 
which is composed of a glucose, galactose and fructose. This is a sugar which commonly present there in the beans as well as in the legume crops. The next one is a tetrasaccharides. The name implies that they consist of four monosaccharide units that are bonded together. A classical example is the stachyos, which is commonly found there in the beans, peas as well as lentils. Mainly in the pulse crops they could be present. They are in turn composed of two galactose unit, one glucose and one fructose unit. The main function of this kind of oligosaccharides that are in the living organisms is they serve as a cell recognition and functions in the cell signaling. Sometimes they also serve as a prebiotic that can able to support the bacterial growth there in the guts. Thereby a good bacteria could be established there in the intestine and gut health could be maintained when you are taking this kind of sugars there with your food. The next group of classification of the carbohydrate is the polysaccharides. They are commonly referred by the term complex carbohydrates. That is, they found to possess more number of saccharides in their form. That is, they made up of long chains of monosaccharide unit. Classical examples are starch, which is commonly present there in the plants, and glycogen, which is a storage form of a carbohydrate that could be come across there in the animals and cellulose that is been present there in the cell wall of the plant system. The next one is the classification of carbohydrates based on the type of monosaccharides. Say based on this it can be divided into two forms. One is a homopolysaccharide, the next one is a heteropolysaccharide. Under homopolysaccharide there are a few classifications of there. Say for example some are referred as a storage polysaccharide. The other group is a structural polysaccharide. That is, they act as a structure for any kind of a living systems. First, we look at the example of the homopolysaccharide. They are mainly composed of only one type of a monosaccharides. The first one is a starch, which is commonly come across there in the plants. Here in the starch, it could be made up of a amylose that is a linear form of a polysaccharide or the other one is amylopectin which is a branched form. Both these polysaccharides found to have glucose as their monomeric units that are linked by alpha glycosidic linkages. Starch primarily serves as an energy storage molecule there in the plant system. A similar energy storage molecule there in the animals is a glycogen. It is a highly branched polymer which are again made up of a monosaccharide glucose. It is having a similar in structure as that of the amylopectin but they are more extensively branched compared to that of the amylopectin. This glycogen is mainly the excess of glucose that have been stored there mainly in the liver as well as muscles in the form of glycogen. So, when energy is depleted, it can be used as an energy source for the living organism. Next one is a structural polysaccharide. Two classical examples of structural polysaccharides could be discussed here. One is a cellulose, which is commonly present there in the cell wall of the plant. It is a linear polymer that is made up of glucose that are linked by beta glycosidic linkages. It forms the primary structural component of the plant cell walls. And this is a one which cannot be digested there by the human system since we do not possess the enzyme cellulases. The next structural polysaccharide that form as a structural skeleton for the cells is a chitin which commonly present there in the cell wall of the fungi as well as in the arthropods say for example crabs. They found to have a lot of chitin there in their shell. They are mainly composed of a glucose derivative form of sugar which is referred as a N-acetyl glucosamine. So, this is the basic monomeric unit that helps in building that particular polysaccharide. It provides a structural support as I already told. It serves as a cell wall there in the fungi as well as the exoskeleton of the arthropods such as a crabs. The next one is a heteropolysaccharide. They are composed of two different types of monosaccharides that have been bonded together. Classical example here is the hyaluronic acid that is a glucosaminoglycan which is made up of repeating units of glucuronic acid as well as N-acetyl glucosamine. 
this particular polysaccharide are present there more about there in the connective tissues and they are very important role playing there in the lubrication of the joints. The next one is a bacterial cell wall which is technically referred as a peptidoglycan. They found to contain two different types of monosaccharide. One is a N-acetyl glucosamine and another one is a N-acetyl muramic acid that are grouped together to form into the bacterial cell wall that is referred as a peptidoglycan. Again, heparin which is playing a major role there in the blood anticoagulation is in turn made up of a repeating units of glucuronic acid as well as N-acetyl glucosamine. This one is technically referred to as a surfactant glucosoaminoglycan. Finally, we look at into the functions of the carbohydrate. The first function is they serve as an energy source, especially the carbohydrate, simple monosaccharide that is glucose is serving as a primary fuel for the cellular respiration. That is, they provide energy that is required for the various body functions. The next one is energy storage. The excess of carbohydrate that have been present there in the living organisms can be stored as a reserved polymer. Say for example, glycogen is the one which is a carbohydrate that have been stored there in the animals whereas starch is again a polymeric carbohydrate that have been stored there in the plant system when they are present in excess. These carbohydrate store can be used when energy is not available in the system or a primary energy source is not available. This complex forms can be hydrolyzed and they can be used by the living system. The next one is a structural role played by the carbohydrate. Polysaccharide forms of carbohydrates such as a cellulose and chitin play the structural role there in plants as well as arthropod and insects respectively. Certain other heteropolysaccharides play a role there in the cell wall of the bacteria that is they are required for the formation of the peptidoglycan which we have recently seen. The next one is a sparing of protein and fat. Carbohydrate prevent the body from using the protein and fats as energy sources that is carbohydrate is a primary source that alone can be used. So under that particular situation this particular protein and fat can be spared for the other functions say for example bodybuilding, muscle repair and even for the hormone production these proteins and fats can be used. And the next function is a cell communication. This cell to cell communication could be affected by certain kind of a carbohydrate especially certain glycoproteins and glycolipids that have been present there in the cell membrane are playing some key role there in the cell signaling or cell to cell communication. And finally, certain carbohydrates are playing the role of a lubricant and shock absorption there in the living organism. The classical example is the glycosoaminoglycans like hyaluronic acid which we have earlier seen. They are commonly playing their role in the crucial functioning of the joints there in the living organisms.